I think the biggest thing that I can say is trust yourself that if you make the commitment, you're going to make it happen. You're going to figure it out because what I've seen in myself is that when I've done that, it was scary at first and then it proved to be a great decision and I went on to make more great decisions. You work hard in your business. On the Profit by Design podcast, we ask the big question. What has your business done for you lately? Hi, I'm Dr. Sabrina Starling. I'm the business psychologist, the author of the Four Week Vacation and the How to Hire the Best series, as well as the founder of Tap the Potential, where we coach entrepreneurs like you to design sustainably profitable businesses that give you more time for what matters most and more money in your bank account than ever. Because after all, We believe work supports life, not the other way around. Weekly on the Profit by Design podcast, we bring you tips, tools, and strategies from our own experiences and from the experiences of our guests who are entrepreneurial thought leaders and real life entrepreneurs, all to support you in making intentionally profitable and sustainable business decisions to live the lifestyle you desire. Profit designers, does it feel like your business is taking over your life? It shouldn't be that way. Work should support life, not the other way around. And at Tap the Potential, we have a solution for you. You can get started on your journey with us to take your life back from your business by downloading my introductory training, How to Make Your Time Worth $10,000 an Hour. You can access it at tapthepotential.com forward slash 10K. Today, I'm joined by Mary Pierce of Pierce and Company. Mary has been with us in our Better Business, Better Life program for, I want to say we're going on close to a year now, because even though you hadn't officially joined, (laughs) we were in conversation with you, Mary, prior to you joining, and you were really looking hard at what was going on in your business, and you were working on making some mindset shifts and some adjustments in your business. And we had had some preliminary discussion about what to do so that you would feel ready and to come into the Better Business, Better Life program. So I want to just kind of peel back for you where you were when you first started with us, because I think so many of us entrepreneurs, we get into the weeds of our business and we've been doing things a certain way for a period of time. And even though we are not experiencing a high quality of life necessarily, our business is making money and we're doing okay. And also at the same time, recognizing that, hey, I went into business so I could have more freedom and I could have a better quality of life. And I'm not really feeling that. And as a matter of fact, what I'm feeling is very different from that. So if you would share where you were when you first started looking at joining the Better Business, Better Life program and what was going on for you. Well, it's funny. The things that you say about, do you have a business that's taking over your life? It's a time-sucking, money-sucking monster. That's how I felt about my business. And it felt like I was just stuck and it was going to be like that forever. And that wasn't a good feeling. So I was trying to figure out what am I doing wrong? And thinking that there was some one big thing that was going to be the magic change, the silver bullet. And since then, I figured out there is no silver bullet. There's no magic wand, darn it. <laughs> yeah. But a lot of little things over time have really made a big difference. It really is the small steps forward taken in a consistent direction that lead to big change over time and taking those steps, the right steps in the right direction of where you want to head that I think has gotten you where you are. Let's talk a little bit about when you say the business was taking over your life and what did that look like for you? It looked like me working seven days a week, a 12 hour day was short and thinking that being exhausted and cranky all the time was normal. And not having any time for my family or friends. Friends? Do I have friends? What friends? <laughs> yeah. I begrudge the dog when he needed to go outside because I'm yeah. not doing it. Yeah. And I know that feeling when we get that busy, we feel like can't other people, can't our pets, can't our people around us see how busy we are? And 
feeling like kind of angry about every little intrusion on our time. Right. And I, instead of making my team feel good about working together, they felt like all I did was pick on them and react, which was true. I was in a very reactive state and didn't even realize that. So interestingly enough, I just read in Tim Ash's book, I think it's The Primal Brain, he talks about how when we are sleep deprived, we become very fear-based and reactive. And we have that feeling that people are out to get us, kind of that hot, that feeling of hostility. <laughs> I started thinking about as business owners, when we get into that place where we're working those long days, there's no possible way that you can sleep a good night and get a, a full night's sleep when you're working consistently 12-hour days. Like our brains are just constantly going when we go to bed. So there's no downtime. And so we're in this loop of negativity, like the overwork leads to our brains not functioning in an optimal way and us becoming more critical and judgmental. And then we start alienating the people around us because who wants to hang out with negative Nelly all the time? Right. And then we get more hostile and resentful of our team, like not wanting to be there to support us and our family members not appropriately supporting us. And it's just this negative cycle. And you, you were on this quest for the magic bullet. Like, what is that one thing that I'm going to do that's going to shift all this? And you weren't finding it because there is no exact magic bullet to make it happen. No, that's very true. And well, I guess there is a magic bullet. It's opening your mind to thinking differently. And realizing that when you move from that scarcity mindset of, I don't have enough time, I don't have enough money, I don't have enough love, or whatever it is, that there is plenty out there if you open up to that. And really, it is just thinking a little bit differently, which is not easy. Yeah. So the mindset really is a huge, it makes a huge difference. And so you moved from scarcity mindset to abundance and feeling safe and supported. Definitely. What helped you? Like, how did you make that move? What prompted that? You know, it, it was really small steps. When I joined Profit First and became a Profit First professional and got into this tribe of people who had this great mindset, and I saw people being successful and I kept thinking, what are they doing that I'm not doing? And a few of them had been in your program. And I thought, I can't do that. I could never afford that. I can't spend that kind of money. I have to be a $3 billion firm before I could do that. And that was more scarcity thinking. So the first thing that I did was take some sales training, which allowed me to see that I wasn't charging enough mm -hmm. for all of the value that we bring to our clients. And that was step one. That was baby step one. Then that slowly inched up our profitability as we got in better clients that fit us better, that were happy with us and we were happy with them, that then it was, okay, I took a risk and spent that money on that sales training. Now can I take another risk? And, you know, when I first talked with you a couple of years ago, <laughs> sitting in that bleacher in Savannah, Georgia, <laughs> I can't do that. Is there something free you can give me? <laughs> yeah. So let's, I want to go back to that moment because that wasn't our first conversation no. in the bleachers. So <laughs> to let you know, Mary and I are both a part of Profit First Mastery. And we were on a retreat in Savannah, Georgia with the other Profit First Mastery members. And my first encounter with Mary is I walked into the door of the meeting area the first day. And Christine Era, another one of our clients, and Mary, Mary rushed me. <laughs> like, I mean, she came, I don't You're know where she, she came out of nowhere and she said, I need what you guys do and tap the potential. And I said, Oh, well, cool. Okay. <laughs> Let's, we should have a conversation about that. And so we found a time to do that. And that was during a visit at that retreat. We went to watch the Savannah Bananas play baseball. And for those of you who've never heard of the Savannah Bananas, you should go. certainly Google them and, and go and experience a Savannah Bananas baseball game. They are totally nailing unique. <laughs> so Mary and I were sitting in the bleachers and we were talking about, you know, how do you make this work for you and, and what are the next steps? So what do you remember about that conversation? I remember walking away thinking, I can't do this. But then it was planted in the back of my head. You can do this. How can you do this? It went from I can't to I can. 
maybe to how can I? And then it was another leap of faith. And based on my friend, Christine, I mean, I saw the great things Christine had done with her farm that is definitely part of what she did working with you. And that made me see this is possible. What I want is possible. And it's worth whatever I have to figure out. And some of it was just making that commitment, setting up that account so that I had money for professional development. That's one of my million accounts. <laughs> so let's talk about that a little bit. There's a couple of interesting things to unpack. So the first thing you said to me is, I wish there was something free that we could, you, you could <laughs> offer me. And so now we have something free. That's the Better yes. Business, Better Life Jumpstart, where I'm teaching a lot of the mindset shifting and also how do you find the money in your business to be able to invest at a higher level to get the support that you need so that you really have a business that is sustainably profitable and gives you your life back. And so Mary, when she said I had to realize I had to charge more, when we talked last week in the jump start about raising fees and looking at how can you focus on your top clients and looking at how can you add value for your top clients and charging appropriately for that. That is all part of this process. We have the opportunity here with Mary and I both being Profit First Professional and Mastery Profit First Professionals to talk about how do we afford ourselves to invest in these higher level programs? Because I invest in it at Tap the Potential and ongoing coaching for us and also for our team and development. You do yourself, Mary. So you mentioned having multiple accounts. So how do you start creating the money in the business for professional development? You know, what I would say to anybody who hasn't done it is start small. I started with half a percent. That doesn't sound like anything, but it starts to build up. And then as it turns out, I collected on some really old accounts receivable. And rather than put that just into my regular income, I said, I'm going to grab that and put it in. This is how I can afford Dr. Sabrina. And that helped. And not everybody has that. But over time, those little amounts that you put into that account and keeping it separate, it makes a big difference. If it yeah. was hiding in my operating expenses, I still would be saying, I can't afford that. And I'd still be where I was two years ago. Yeah. So it's the mindset shift from I can't afford it to I would like to do this. No, I don't just like to do this. I want to do this because, my gosh, I'm going to take my life back from my business. So there's that emotional shift. Like I'm no longer the frog in the boiling pot of water. Like the heat has turned up so much. You're ready to jump out of that water. And then it's a matter of, well, now I want to jump, but how? And so that how question is really the mindset shift of I'm going to figure out how to make it happen. And for me, every time I've invested in a big way in my business, there's been that, oh my gosh, factor, the like gasp and, and the way that my rational brain that needs to justify it says, well, you know, Sabrina, when you're really committed to something that matters to you, you pull out all the stops and you'll do that again for this. So just trust yourself. Mm -hmm. But then the other piece of, you know, using some profit first strategy to figure out how to create the money in the business to make it happen, setting up a designated account for professional development is a great way to do it. It's starting with half a percent or 1% of the revenue that comes into the business. And it does add up over time. And just in terms of how we make, this is a over $30,000 program. And so, you know, for a lot of entrepreneurs, it's, you know, just coming in and plunking down $30,000 is a big deal. This is, most people don't have that just sitting in their business. So we have clients who are on payment plans. And so mm -hmm. if you're putting a percentage into an account designated for professional development, and you see that you can make a monthly payment on a program like ours, that can give you confidence to go ahead and pull the trigger and move forward. And because you see the money regularly building in your account. So it's learning how to charge appropriately for your service, starting to create that margin, and then having a designated account. And in the meantime, participating in things like our Jumpstart so that you are learning, these are the things I need to focus on in my business. One of the follow-up conversations you and I had, and I think, so that was a conversation in May, two years ago. And then around November, December, you and I had another conversation and that one was about, Mary, you really need to focus on your top clients. You're serving way too many and you're stretched really thin. And you, boy, you push back pretty hard. On mm -hmm. that. And even, I will also give to your credit, even as you push back, you said, I know you're right. I know I need to do this. And it's scary. 
it was really scary. But now looking back that I let go in a very gracious way, I found homes for the clients that didn't fit us anymore. It has been so much better. It's better for them because they're being served by someone who's excited to deal with them and wants to work with clients like that. And I'm left with clients that I'm excited to work with and they are excited to work with us. And we cut our number of tax returns in half just from last year to this year. And we had done almost the same thing the prior year. So it's a we're in year two and a half of a three year plan. So what has that done? Because you've reduced your client list. What has that done to the revenue and the profit in the business? You know, the revenue really didn't change. That's where nobody believes it. That old 80-20 thing. When I actually put it in a spreadsheet and yeah, I'm an accountant, so everything goes in a spreadsheet. And when I did that sort and said, oh, my gosh, almost 80 people, 80 different people who call and need attention need it, not just their, it's legitimate, are less than 20% of my revenue. And when I raise my rates that are probably still not where they should be, we didn't have an effect on our gross revenue. And our profit went up because we're spending less on the people and all of the back office things that you need to support that many tax returns. And my staff is happier than they've ever been about, they were talking the other day, we don't have to talk to X anymore yeah. or where they are happy. Yes. So I also want to point out the context of the timing of you making these choices because the COVID and what that has done with the law, the tax law for accountants, there are so many accountants who are just totally fried from the changing deadlines and the extensions of and everything getting spread out. And there is no clear tax season anymore. It's all constant tax season. And so you reducing your number of clients was a very smart move to do because can you imagine going through that year with 80 plus more clients? We couldn't have done it. We could not have helped the people that we helped because we would have just been scrambling from deadline to deadline. And we still felt the stress of the never ending tax season that started in January of 2020 and kind of still is going on. Mm -hmm. But we're able to deal with it because we can focus better. How is your life different now than it was two years ago? Well, now I have a lot less worry about paying bills on a personal level. I have to find things to do on the weekends, which is <laughs> what I call a high class problem. But I was used to working all the time. And now it's like, well, OK, for the first couple of weekends, I did sit on my tush and watch TV. <laughs> sure. But I'm starting to try and schedule things so that I actually have something to do. And I've been looking at maybe taking up some of my hobbies that I haven't been into in a long time. So you're having to rebuild your life. Like it's not just taking your life back from your business. You have to make a life that's worth living so that because you could easily get back into just working in the business because you don't know what to do with yourself necessarily. That is the fallback, unfortunately, that I'm, you know, I still have to fight that. Yeah. And that's, you know, working in the place where you live makes it doubly hard. Boy, don't I know. <laughs> I, I totally get that. And so you're not working weekends. You used to work weekends and you, you have your weekends to yourself. What's the average length of your work day? It has been about nine hours, which okay. is amazing. Because like I said, I used to think 12 hours was a short day. So, and I actually still feel weird when I get up from my desk at five or even six o'clock. Like it's still light out. Why am I not working? Mm -hmm. I used to work until it was dark. I don't care what season it was. And it was just, it still feels weird. So, and how are you doing with unplugging? Like leaving your phone and just disconnecting from the business? I'm getting better. You know, that's one of those things that you can tell yourself that you need your family to be able to get in touch with you. But I am getting better. My, my phone is on life support. I'm waiting for the new model to come out. So it dies a lot. So that kind of does it for me. Hey, it can't um, ring. It's dead. <laughs> yeah. So in the your team, like your team is very different than it was a year ago. Yes. And the other day I messaged one of my newer team members who has taken over a lot of the recurring accounting work that I was picking up because there was nobody else to do. 
and I realized she had done it all while I was out of town. And I was working some, but while I was out of town, she got it all done. I checked in with her and said, hey, do we need to look at client X together? She said, oh, that's already sent. They already approved it. Everything's great. This was really cool. <laughs> so I'm going to put you on the spot, Mary. That's okay. Okay. You can tell me yes or no if you're going to answer this. We have a big, hairy, audacious goal at Tap the Potential, and this is the first time I've ever talked publicly about it. But our goal is by the end of 2023 that we have 150 better business, better life clients who have taken a four-week vacation. So where I put you on the spot is, do you have a four-week vacation in the works? I'm working on it. What I need to do is commit to exactly when I'm going to do it, which I, yeah, I had one scheduled for last July and COVID kind of blew that up. I took some time off, but... I think I'm definitely ready to make that commitment and schedule the time. Fantastic. Okay. I'm going to leave it at that and know that you're going to find the time and make that commitment. So what is the longest time to date that you've been able to be fully unplugged from your business? Honestly, probably only a week, but that's better than it used to be, you know, two minutes. Yeah. So that week has happened in the last couple of years since you've been in the program. Actually, it happened in May when I was down. Like I said, I did some work, but I was gone for two solid weeks and I only worked one week of it. Okay. So you were fully unplugged the other week. So I want everyone listening to hear that because I know you're saying, you know, it's just been a week for many entrepreneurs thinking about being able to be away from the business fully unplugged for a week is mind blowing. (laughs) And I know like that. Yeah. Yeah. And so recognizing that it's possible. When we survey, we have entrepreneurs who take our Better Business, Better Life assessment, and we are summarizing the results. One of the really eye-opening results that I saw is that the average length of time that people who've taken that survey have been in business is five years. And the average length of time they've been able to be away from their business is zero days. I shouldn't say average. It's the most frequently recurring response to that question of how many days have you been able to be fully unplugged? zero. So imagine five years in business or more and no opportunity to unplug from business. Like the business is just in your life constantly. What that feels like. And I say, imagine it. I don't think we have to imagine it. We've all been there. You've been there, Mary. I think many people watching this video are right there. And so when Mary is saying it's been able to take a week fully unplugged and I'm challenging her now to work towards the four week vacation, because if she can do a week, she can do two weeks next time. And then after that, she can do three weeks and bam, she's at her four week vacation. It doesn't take much once you get to that one week mark to get to four weeks. And the other thing that I saw in what you shared with me recently is when you started working, you're in our How to Hire the Best course, you're working on hiring a high level member of your team, and you did a calculation of the hours that you would reclaim in your life by hiring this team member. Do you remember that calculation? Yeah, I keep track of my time. It was 380 hours that I spent doing these tasks that I know that a new person can take over. And that's without, I bet there's more. So 380 hours a year. Wow. Yeah. So that's close to 10 work weeks a year that you're reclaiming. (laughs) You're learning how to hire the best and doing it at the higher levels in your business and delegating. So in the jumpstart in the last week, we've talked about that chart of $10,000 an hour activities. And so when Mary is hiring someone to take a lot of $100 an hour tasks off her plate, or even $1,000 an hour tasks off her plate, she's reclaiming 380 hours a year. If she puts a portion of those 380 hours a year on the business and focuses on her $10,000 an hour activities, which, you know, you've been doing some speaking engagements and getting out there and, and traveling, and building relationships with referral partners that will bring in the high level clients that you want to have in the business. Those are all $10,000 an hour activities. If you're able to put more time there, you're going to easily be able to afford to hire this higher level person in the business. Yes. And and it sounds scary to hire somebody at that level and the salary that they would command. And then when you Mm -hmm. stop and think about what you could do with the time that you'll have, I went, it was like that 
I could have had a, how can I not? Yeah. A, yeah. Another leap of faith that I'm feeling more and more comfortable that I can make this work because it's going to allow us to grow and get to where we want to be and offer our clients more of what we're already giving them. So for those of you listening, I don't know if you caught it, but Mary said, I went to, I can't to, how can I? She, that was the mindset shift, even around hiring this higher level team member. Like I can't afford it. Well, how can I afford it? And then you started recognizing what it allows you to be able to do in the business easily allows you to be able to pay that individual. And the other thing that I want to share just on a strategy side is all these things that we want to do in our business, our big visions and our hopes and dreams. We just don't have the skills yet, or someone just hasn't shown us a path for how to get there. And so like the four week vacation, Andrew Torzik has a quote in the book that the four week vacation is just a set of skills I don't have yet. And so if you're listening to this and you're thinking, wow, I would really like to hire a high level person in my business who would take a lot off of me. And you're thinking, I can't change your question to how can I? And then one of the things that you can do if you're implementing profit first in your business is you can have a raises promotions hiring account in the business where you start making contributions to that account to show you that you can afford that. And I like to think about having three months worth of someone's salary in there, especially for a high level role, before pulling the trigger on actually posting the job and hiring someone. It's possible. All these things are possible. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Mary, I mean, you are more profitable. You have more money in your bank account than ever. You have more time and you're continually working to free up more and more of your time. And one of the coolest things that you've done recently is you have expanded your vision and you're looking several years out and you're looking at what's possible. So you've moved out of that survival mode and you have the free space to think and to dream and hope again. So You've developed a new vision, I w- and it's going to be shared in the four-week vacation book. Mary was gracious enough to let me put the whole vision in the book to inspire others, because I think when we start writing visions, they need to be very clear and compelling so that it's not just us that sees them in our head, but when we share them with other people, they can see it too. So I would love, Mary, for you to share some of your vision. Where are you headed next? What's important to you? Well, There's a couple of big pieces in here. Mine, it says, it's July, 2024. Our firm is known for the transformation we provide for our clients. Honesty, transparency, and high quality work. Our clients say we have set up their businesses to be profitable, provide innovative tax planning to save them money and help systemize their business. They say things like, we love working with the Pearson Company team. We're knowledgeable, empathetic, and eager to help make my business better. I'm paraphrasing, sorry. The other big thing that's the big, hairy, scary, audacious goal (laughs) is we are receiving media recognition for our vision and innovative strategies that help our clients. We are major movers in Profit First mission to eradicate entrepreneurial poverty. Mary's first book, Profit First for Automotive Repair Shops, has been on the Amazon bestseller list for the past year. That's the BHAG. So you want to write a book and you have specialized in, you have a niche, automotive repair shops, and you've been helping them implement profit first. So you're very, like you have all this knowledge and wisdom and expertise and you're ready to write that book and you're ready to really claim this is where we focus, this is where we specialize and we want to transform the owner's lives in these automotive repair shops. You know, my family comes from that background. My grandpa had a shop. My brother had a shop. My dad had an auto parts store. So I love it. Yeah. So you have lots of life experience to bring to this, plus the whole profit first system and all the ways that you have adapted the system to work for your top clients. So when we talk about niching down with a clearly defined sweet spot, that's what Mary has done. So you paired back your client list significantly. A lot of the work that you let go of was not small business owner work. It was individual tax returns, which was very far outside the sweet spot. And then you went even further in and you said, okay, it's going to be automotive repair shops. I would venture, Mary, that it's not all automotive repair shops. 
No, there are other folks. You know, I still love construction and have a couple of those clients. And we don't say that we won't serve anyone else. This is just something that we're very good at and we really like. So yeah. like attracts like, and you know, they hear about us and what we can do and we continue to help them. And so it's one of the really fun things that we do, but it doesn't, you don't have to, niche does not mean you don't do anything else. Right. That's for sure. Right. So you're, what you're doing when you niche is you're claiming your area of expertise and you're making it widely known that, that you're the go-to in that niche. And so we at Tap the Potential have clients like that that have been with us and we attract other clients who are outside the niche necessarily. Not everyone who comes in needs help with hiring and growing the team, but they come in and they get that along with help with designing that sustainably profitable business. And they oftentimes they realize I needed help here and I didn't know I needed help here. Mm -hmm. this, this is a big hairy beast over here when it comes, when it comes to dealing with people. So Mary said it loud and clear. I just want to underscore it. When you niche, you're not turning people away. You're just merely saying, this is what we have the opportunity to be the best in the world at. And this is what we're going to focus on as we grow. And I would venture, Mary, as you go further into that niche, you're going to recognize that you're not serving every business owner who has an automotive repair shop. They're not going to be your top, your top clients. They're just a certain type of business and a certain mentality. Have you started, when you think about your top clients, what do you notice about their mindset and how they show up when they come to work with you? Well, the biggest thing is that they want to make a change. There's something they're not happy with that they're coachable and approachable and that that they're willing to change the status quo. If they come in and say that they want to change and then maybe it turns out that they don't, then we might not be such a good fit. But the ones who truly want to make a change and are open to suggestions and even bring us suggestions, this is not all one-sided, the guru on the mountain. I love it when they bring me new things and we can explore them together. So it's a collaborative partnership. Very that, much. That's where you shine and where your top clients live in their in their head mm -hmm. and how they show up in your business. So as we're thinking this through and you're getting ready to write a book, you know, I know there's a lot of business owners out there who've thought about writing a book. And the main obstacle is time. So where are you going to find the time to write a book, Mary? Oh hey, there's that four week vacation. <laughs> <laughs> how handy. <laughs> Those 380 hours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so where I'm going with that is a lot of people hear about a four-week vacation and they think, you know, I really don't want to sip margaritas on a beach for four weeks. As lovely as that sounds to do it for a few days, I think I would get bored. And I think all of us have endeavors that we've wanted to pursue outside of the business that maybe their hobbies or maybe their professional interests like writing a book that we just have always felt compelled to do. So when you're taking that time back from your business and you're reclaiming your life, you get to choose how you spend that time and you get to decide, you know, it's always, it's been important to me that I want to have time to write a book. So I'm going to create that time. I'm going to take the time back from my business and make that space. I also am a big advocate for making sure that there are some weeks in there that are fully unplugged and you're not doing any hard mental work. But the beauty of the four week vacation and taking your life back from your business is you're on the path to working 40 hour weeks and then 30 hour weeks. And maybe you get out and down to even 25 hour weeks when you have higher level team members mm -hmm. that creates more time as well for you to be able to write a book and you don't necessarily have to take a vacation to write the book. So it's an evolving process that happens as you're taking more and more of your life back from your business. When you started with us, Mary, when did you first start to experience change, like more money in your bank account? and more time for what matters. How long did that take? I think it may have taken longer than I thought, but I also, even though I had joined, maybe hadn't fully committed mentally to what I needed to do. So it took a couple of months. But as soon as I started coming to the coaching calls in our small group meetings, I felt the value of being in a community of like-minded individuals. None of them were in my business. So it was really interesting to, to think about hey, in some ways we all have the same challenges and look how they're solving that. How can I adapt that to mine? So 
it was actually pretty fast. You know, when you look at it from one point of view, a couple of months, you know, maybe I was looking for that magic bullet still. <laughs> uh-huh. So I think what happens for you is what happens for a lot of our clients coming into our Better Business, Better Life program. When you get into a group with several other business owners, and some of them are a little further along than where you are, and they're talking about taking time off, and they're talking about developing their team, and that they have people who are doing things that they used to do. You see, while they're doing it, and just a couple months ago, they were like me. So how did they get from where I am to where they are now? What are they doing? And it creates, quite again, that question of how and that curiosity. And there's that peer support that really comes into play because the other business owners start pulling for you. And if you're coming to the meeting every other week and you're saying, I work 90 hours this week and I'm so tired and other business owners are hearing that for more than a couple of meetings, they challenge that and start asking, well, what can you do? How can you take some more off your plate? And it's never the magic bullet. There's never the one answer. Your answer was over time, letting go of clients who were not ideal clients. It was hiring team members who were A players and really up leveling your team. And then after you did that, now you're hiring at an even higher level and moving towards that four week vacation, having time to write a book, big things in your life. You also expressed that you want to get back to some hobbies that you haven't enjoyed since you were a child, like gardening and horseback riding. Yep. Been a long time since I've done that. Yeah. I haven't had time. Mary, as you think about where you were, and I know that a big reason you're here is because you recognize where you were and that it took a lot of courage to step forward into a program like the Better Business, Better Life program. And it's made a big difference in your life. And you want to inspire other entrepreneurs who are considering this. And I want to publicly thank you because I know you've been talking at industry, your industry networking events and conferences about the Better Business, Better Life program. You've actually referred people directly in who joined our program. So you're a huge advocate and I appreciate that so much. For those of you who use the sweet spot in your business and the tap the potential solution, one of the really cool things about designing your business around your top clients is you attract more like them. Mary is a joy to work with in our program, an absolute joy. And, you know, when you think about your clients who are a joy to work with, if you can 10X them and have a business filled with those clients, what it feels like. And so when your top clients send you more referrals, there's a high chance they're going to be just like your top clients. So that's the overall goal. So Mary, what are some words of wisdom that you have for somebody who would be considering joining the program that may help them make a decision? I think the biggest thing that I can say is trust yourself that if you make the commitment, you're going to make it happen. You're going to figure it out because what I've seen in myself is that when I've done that, it was scary at first and then it proved to be a great decision and I went on to make more great decisions. Yeah. That's, I mean, there's no better way to say it. So if you hadn't joined the program, where would, what would your business and your life be like right now? (laughs) I'd probably still be working all the time and trying to find somebody to buy it because I'm about to fall down and never get back up. It was going to kill me. The stress was going to kill me. Yeah. And I ask that because I know a lot of people who contemplate joining our program, oftentimes when they join, it's their last straw. It is like, I'm so sick of my business, (laughs) the way it's operating now. I'm ready to just go out and get a J-O-B and and be done with this. (laughs) I used to regularly say, man, Walmart's looking good this week. (laughs) Yeah. And so the small steps forward taken in a consistent direction lead to big change over time. So for some of you listening, if you're ready to jump in into the Better Business, Better Life program, we're going to welcome you with open arms. And if there's those of you listening and you're thinking, I really want to get there, I'm just not there yet. You don't have to go it alone. Our team is here to support you and help you create a plan and give you those small steps that you can take to get you moving in the right direction. And then when you're ready, we're going to welcome you with open arms and bring you into the program. And so I sincerely hope that what Mary has shared with you today and what we've been sharing with you throughout the jumpstart is shining a light on what's possible in your business and that you're recognizing that boy, if my business has been draining the life out of me, I have options. I don't have to 
stay where I am. I can make changes. It's possible. There's lots of people who've gone before me who are doing this. They're succeeding. There's a path forward. And I think it's that hope and knowing there's a path forward that is so important right now for any entrepreneur who is totally burnt out. If you are ready to move forward with us, your next step is to take our Better Business, Better Life assessment and schedule a consultation. Go to tapthepotential.com forward slash assessment. Thank you for spending time with us today. Join our conversation in the Entrepreneurs Take Your Life Back Facebook community at tapthepotential.com forward slash group. Share your aha moments from today's episode, ask me questions, and join in on the fun with your fellow entrepreneurs on the journey to designing sustainably profitable businesses that give you more time for what matters most and more money in your bank account than ever. And finally, share today's episode with a friend if you know a friend who would enjoy it. This is real life business. Keep your chin up, keep moving forward. You got this. If you're loving the Profit by Design podcast and have gotten any value out of it for your business or your life, would you mind doing two things? Subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode and please leave us a review. Our listener reviews help us get into the top 10 of all entrepreneurship podcasts so that more entrepreneurs like you discover us. Your review is critical in helping us make a difference for more entrepreneurs who are ready to take their life back.